Thank you for joining us uh, this morning, and uh, welcome, a special welcome uh, to Minister Khan and to Ambassador uh, Jelani. We're very pleased that Minister Khan could make it here through the turbulence and the snow uh, and join us here in Washington, D.C., and thanks all of you for making your way here. Um, we are very pleased to host Minister Khan this morning. He is in town, of course, for a series of countering violent extremism events hosted by the White House and the State Department. And uh, this is an important conversation that we're very pleased he's able to be here for. Um, I, as many as you, of you know, um, am still relatively new here as the um, president of USIP. And uh, nonetheless, I am looking forward to uh, making one of my first trips to Pakistan in the next month or so. Pakistan has been a very important area of focus for USIP since uh, 2007, working with a variety of partners um, in Pakistan um, and working on various research projects. We have also convened a number of events here where we've been able to bring important thought leaders both from around the world and from Pakistan to discuss critical issues. Uh, we've had the privilege of hosting Pakistan's Prime Minister, His Excellency Mia Nawaz Sharif, for his first public event in Washington, D.C. after taking office. So I'm especially pleased that we're able to do the same for Minister Khan, as this is his first public event in Washington, D.C. since taking his current position as Minister of the Interior in Pakistan. This is, however, the sixth time that he has held a ministerial position um, over his years as one of Pakistan's leading politicians of uh, various portfolios. Um, so we're very, very pleased to have him here with us today. Um, he, of course, um, in addition to the interior, he was previously Minister of Science and Technology, Minister of Petroleum, of Natural Resources, so obviously a man of far-ranging capabilities. Um, after he has made some remarks, he will be joined on stage uh, by uh, Moeed Youssef, who is our South Asia director, uh, for a brief conversation. And so those of you in the audience have received question cards, and I invite you to note the questions down, and then we can pass them forward and include those in the conversation after the remarks. So with that, I would like to welcome Minister Khan and invite him uh, up to make some comments for us today. Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. President uh, of the Institute, uh, my colleagues, honorable ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed uh, a pleasure for me to be here amongst you this morning. Uh, at the outset, I'd like to thank the U.S. Institute for Peace for providing me this opportunity to interact uh, with all of you here. And I would like to thank you for taking out the time to be here. I've been told that the basic focus uh, of my talk should be on the current situation, not only in Pakistan, but uh, in, in the rest of the region, in South Asia, uh, across the border, in Afghanistan, to try and give you uh, from, the, from the ground, so as to say, uh, the developments which have taken place over the last few months, over the last couple of years. But before I give you the exact situation as it stands to, today, uh, I think uh, a certain perspective, a certain background, a, a certain historical background also needs to be narrated in order to make sense uh, of uh, what I'm going to say. Uh, let me also apologize at the outset that I um, don't have any written notes, um, so I'll be speaking off the cuff. So if I go off a tangent uh, somewhere, uh, here and there, I hope you'll ex excuse me. But I'll, I'll try and keep my conversation and my talk and my interaction with you as focused as possible 
uh, so that uh, uh, we are able to come to some kind of an understanding uh, as to the situation in my part of the world. I think all of you know that Pakistan has been in the eye of the storm for the last many years, starting in the late 70s when the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan. Pakistan had the option to remain neutral. It had the option, like a few other countries in the region, to be quietly supportive of the Soviet Union. 